Hey everybody, I'm Ingrid Blackburn. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I have an amazing tutorial for you today on easy mass produced cards. I love adding unexpected things to cards and this is a great mass produced cards, especially because there's these wonderful cut files. You can see that you have lots of different variety here. You can do some with the snowflake, some without. There's actually a little snowflake that fits in the O. There's this great tree background. You know, add it onto color or white, you know, you have so many options. So first off, I need to create a very simple kind of wavy mask out of some masking paper. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that to my cut file panel. And I always like to rub those onto my sleeve or my jeans just to help even remove a little tiny bit more tack. You know, it's just me. Even though these are removable sheets, I still like to just do that just to help ensure that it really does release very well. And I'm going to take the domed scrapbook.com tool and I love these tips. They make blending effortless and I've linked to another video here in the upper corner if you're interested in a little more ink blending and I'll link it below as well. And you can see just really creating some very simple little drifts. And this technique is just so much fun. It creates such interest on your cards. And you can see by having these cut files that you know you cut out with an electronic cutter, you've got such an amazing background already kind of done for you. So when you're mass producing cards, I mean, my gosh, talk about making things a lot easier. So to get the really nicely ink blended sky, we're gonna use some of the life changing brushes here. And these are just some of the blending brushes that are around on the market. They make blending so much easier, especially when you're covering big areas such as this, you know, this is two thirds of a card front here. So I'm taking various shades of ink and don't worry, everything is linked in the description area below along with all the links to the parade hop. We've got 20 amazing crafters that have created something very cool on either their blog or YouTube channel for you. Don't forget you can uh, get a chance to win a $100 gift certificate to scrapbook.com. I mean, that's an awesome prize. So definitely leave a comment below. All the details are in that section as well. But here is my little tiny secret for creating an intense, beautiful sky, adding a little bit of purple there to that top. Because when you combine purple and blue, it creates this beautiful shade of indigo and it's just a really nice finishing touch there at the top. You wanna to come back in with blue so it takes away some of the tinge of the purple, but look at this. Isn't that a great impact? Now we need to come back and just make sure that our bottom matches the intensity at the top. You, know, you don't want it to be overly intense, but you want it to be balanced. And there you have it. I absolutely love that look, but this is not the end to this card. We're taking this card to a whole different level. It would be perfect, it would be great right here on the white, but you know, it's snow, and what is snow? It's sparkly, so I'm taking these full sheets by scrapbook.com, and I love double-sided adhesive. It's great that you can get, you know, uh, full sheets that you can trim down. And then I'm just gonna pop this onto the front of my card base. I cut it down to the exact same size using a bone folder there. That's my Teflon bone folder by Tonic. Love that tool. It went over a little bit, so I just trimmed that up with my uh, scissors. I'm gonna make sure that's adhered really well. Peel that off and it's the perfect way to adhere glitter. I'm taking some of the Pure Sheen Glitter by Tonic. I've just kind of got it in a little container there that I like to store it in because glitter gets everywhere, let's be honest. <laughs> and look at that, what a great sparkly background for this card and it's perfect because the cut file or you know, if you were to use any die too, you know, if you don't have an electronic cutter, you can use dies to cut out your greeting or shapes, you can cut out snowflakes, there's so many different things you could do. I wanna pop this up though, so that you really have the dramatic effect. There's a shadow, almost creating like a shadow box, and then you have all that great glittery snow peeking through there. Is that not a great card? It's actually a great mass produced card, and you could very easily you know, do all your panels and then uh, do all your backgrounds and then uh, attach them together. I love that one, but wait till you see what's coming up next. For this project, we're gonna actually take some sentiment stamps, and this is the Big Bold Christmas. I love this sentiment stamp set. These are really big and 
uh, honestly bold. <laughs> I mean, this was the perfect name. But what's great about them is you can do so much. I'm going to use a play on the pine and cardinal red hybrid inks by scrapbook.com. But first, we're going to use the premium white ink. And I'm going to take this bold Merry Christmas stamp and first snapping the lid into the base. Love that I can use these ink pads as really nice handles and the finger grips. Makes it very easy. Going to get that inked up really well. And I'm using one of the scrapbook.com blocks because this works really well with a block. It would take too long with a Misty. You know, you're going to be constantly inking it up and moving your paper around. So having my glass mat right there and having all those straight lines really did help. And just wanted to kind of move this around. I don't want the Mary to all be in the same place. So kind of creating this entire background stamp of Merry Christmas, if you will. Now I'm going to take a cleaned off version of this and I am going to use my Misty here now and just going to stamp my Merry Christmas in the Cardinal Red. And this is the perfect Christmas red. You're going to hear me say that again. It's the perfect Christmas red. I absolutely love it. Both the red and the green work so well for holiday cards. And just kind of stamping that a couple times and then I'm going to do the same with the green. I ended up not securing my paper and needing to do it a second time. So there's always the flip side of every sheet of paper, right? Love that about stamping. <laughs> <laughs> Got to use every single little scrap. If you do the same, tell me in the comments below. I would love to know. So going to give that a quick set, heat set with my heat tool because it is hybrid ink. So it's part pigment, part dye-based ink and does dries a, just slightly slower than regular dye-based ink. And I wasn't exactly sure if I wanted to leave these along, but I ended up deciding to trim them down. And this is just that real simple little pop off the background, which we stamped onto some Desert Storm cardstock. Gonna edge those and add a little bit of liquid platinum embossing powder. It's the perfect little accent. I love it because it's not quite silver, but it has its own unique characters and properties. It's truly one of my all time favorite. Uh, embossing powders. I use it all the time. And so I'm using the one by Ranger. Just going to give that a heat set and going to do the same to the corners of this card. And you can see how this card really lends itself well to mass production. You can do all your backgrounds and do all your sentiments and assemble. It's something that can be done on the go. You know, get all your pieces done ahead of time, at, pop it onto a white card base. And there you go. I'm adding a couple of the sparkling clear sequins and these are from the crater lake sequin little collection by Catherine pooler i love these they're my favorite sparkling clear sequins absolutely love them quick easy simple card on to the next i absolutely love masking shapes and you can make real statement pieces so i'm taking one of the wafer thin star dies and going to just run that through my big shot I popped it out and I probably should have spent a little more time making that a little straight, but that's okay. These great shapes, nice big sizes. You can make some really cool things, especially around the holidays, like ornaments and shaker cards. And I lined up the joy sentiment. This is a really nice bold sentiment using the scrapbook.com embossing ink pad. I love how the lids snap into the bases of all their pads. Such a great tool and it makes it so much easier when you're inking upside down as I do often, especially when using a Misty. Gonna get a really nice image there. Make sure to do that twice. I always do when I'm embossing using the Misty. So gonna get that really well onto there and I'm then gonna go ahead and heat set this using liquid platinum. It is important if you saw me originally use a little embossing buddy there on my project before because that helps to keep the embossing powder in just the places that it's supposed to be. Look at that. And then we'll just quickly heat set that. I always like to start from the reverse side of my paper because it, paper is fibrous and just it's always good to just kind of heat it from the back side. It helps to prevent with the warping and it actually makes the embossing process go a little bit faster. Love that. It's just so beautiful and that's pretty on its own but Here's a great little tip. Take the part that's the cutout, position it exactly where you want it, 
then put your mask over it. It makes it a lot easier because I can't see through my piece of paper. And especially if you do end up cutting it like I did a little crooked, using Cardinal Red. Reds can be tough to find and this is a really great red. And now we're gonna do a little bit of quick ink blending with the domed tools and I love these tools and look at how smooth that goes on. These tools are awesome to get some really flawless ink blending coverage, especially when using the hybrid ink pads by scrapbook.com and the colors, you know, they're really impactful and what's really great about it is because it's a hybrid ink, which is a combination of pigment and dye ink, it's really going to hold its color for standing the test of time, which is really great and they do dry waterproof, uh, which is another great feature of them. So I'm gonna take a, a light misting spray bottle and just lightly mist a paper towel. I'm just gonna kind of rub off any ink that might have collected onto the embossed areas because that resisted the ink. And look at that, is that not awesome? I love the impact that that shape gives this card. It's quick, it's simple, it's definitely something you can easily mass produce, but it, we're not done yet. You know, I need the perfect coordinating base. So I'm just taking my ink pad, why I didn't snap the lid into it, I'm not quite sure, and just rubbing it along the sides. You know, this is not a foam pad, so it's a little bit more durable. You could very easily do techniques like this. And I love that I can get the exact same shade on a base to go with my card. And look at that, quick and simple. Now, when you do techniques like that, you wanna make sure that you also have the refill because you will need to refill your pad because you're giving off a lot of ink. I always wanna make sure to securely get my card front to my base. And then I'm gonna add some of the sentiments. And I love a lot of the sentiment sets that they have over at scrapbook.com because they give some of the inside sentiments and those are kind of hard to find. Stamping it with their premium dye-based black ink, not hybrid, that's the black ink that's the dye pad and it is crisp and nice and deep. It's absolutely fabulous, love it. So you can see how